Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of La Brea. A great season finale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode. Ugh, this episode, so let's break it down. Uh, first and foremost, let's start with Eve uh, trying to rescue Josh and... Um, Levi. Now, I thought, like, the moment, maybe the moment Silas found out, like, oh, Josh, because I wasn't sure if, like, it, Isaiah kept being like, oh, Silas is my grandpa, but I wasn't sure if that was, like, really, really the case, but even, even he was like, that's your great-grandson, he's like, I don't care, I'm protecting my family, I'm like, what does it have to do with protecting your family, that's also your family, but he's like, for whatever reason, whatever it is that Isaiah goes through like this is all part of something greater and he knows like Gavin's at the center of it and he doesn't want that to happen to him he doesn't want that future to be his life but it's like you're going to screw up a lot of stuff I mean you're going to kill your own great grandchildren in the process but it's like I don't know them I don't care it's like all I care about is my grandchild because maybe it has something to do with the fact is that Isaiah slash Gavin's the only family he has left because we don't know about Gavin's parents like what their circumstances are but, uh, so, Eve let herself get captured so she could cut herself, uh, she can, you know, rescue the others. But at the same time, um, obviously everyone back at the camp is trying to decide the conversation, like, right, how are we going to get, like, this whole 1988 conversation? And Aldrich comes clean to a tiny extent. It turns out all these sinkholes, her and Silas were a part of a team. Now, question is, who else was a part of that team? Uh, the, the fact is that this is all happening, but I guess it's like they were trying to, un maybe they were working on a form of time travel and to basically the experiment went, wow, but why has it been manifesting the way it has? Like how long have they been working on it? Like as a reason why they, once again, they had some intermediate knowledge of all this. Cause I think they've bounced back and forth. Like they've somehow found a way to either like shift themselves because they have the technology and access to do it. Maybe Silas is the only one that has access to it now because maybe it's here in this world, whatever it is that allowed them to do it but because it's like we know it goes back to the 60s so how long have they been working on when did they create it and like why is it popping up all these very like is it that they're basically breaking the space-time continuum of all these um sinkholes and that that's why it's randomly popping all over the place because technically time is breaking because they have basically enacted some shenanigans that's screwing things up because like why these very specific location why these very specific times it has to be a thing of just like that there, there has to be some pattern to it you know there has to be or maybe it's just supposed to be the chaotic like effect of like right you broke time and space and now like potential i mean this seems like if this is if this is you guys meddling, making sinkholes and stuff like that, you you're experimenting on something and it went wrong. This definitely seems like a oh things could exponentially get worse because this could just be like I said the very ending of the very fabric of space and time. They could be like this seems like that could be that timey wimey type of thing of just kind of throwing everything into chaos. It definitely seems like it could be like a Legends of Tomorrow like season two finale where guys I think we broke time and like all the time ends up like meet like dinosaurs are running around where you see like revolutionary soldiers type like like everything is mixed and matching like i could definitely see like all the times like collapsing upon each other type of thing kind of almost like a crisis on infinite earths kind of thing uh except more specifically about time and rather than rather than like a multiverse thing you know so we'll definitely have to wait and see on that but that's kind of my immediate thought about what that's all about especially because well, Scott is left, you know, looking after Aldridge uh, because the others want to go help out um, Josh and the others. And Scott, you know, he beats himself up about it because it's like Sam trying to make him feel better. But like, no, no, we got an important job for you. and need you to look after Aldridge, OK? But like, you know, he's like, right, I know Sam was just doing that to make me feel better. It's like for time time and time again, like he always freezes when the time comes. So he's been beating himself up about it. your buddy Josh is in danger. And what did you do at the end? You got scared and now you're stuck here. And he was trying to tell the callus, no, 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 it's good. I'm not I'm not yelling, mad at you. I'm more sure like mad at myself, you know, but she wants to show him something. And it's like, I can give you answers to everything because I love that Josh is like, I've watched enough movies and stuff to know, like in a science fictional story, you're the bad guy. She's like, you think I'm the bad guy? I think you're misguided. I think you had the best of intentions of like, oh, the beautiful discovery of science and stuff like that. But I think it took a wrong turn. And maybe 
maybe she can't, I think she might be misguided in her attempts and cause whatever it is, Silas is trying to stop it. So I think she is going to be positioned potentially as the villain, but kind of being like, I'm not really the bad guy. Cause Silas definitely appears like he's the bad guy under these circumstances, but I think it's cause he's trying to stop what's coming because she like, it probably was a thing of it went too far and Silas like, we need to stop this. And by stopping Gavin from ever going back in time, cause that might've been the inspiration for all of this. So if like, if we move that equation, all of this disappears because it probably takes him going back in time to 98. Well, or going to the future. Once again, we still don't know what time exactly they're from, but him going from 10,000 BC to 1988 might've had been an influential, influential part to all of this. It's like him popping up in 98 and 88. It's probably proof of like, yep, time travels real. These sinkholes, like, you know, so that's probably what jumpstarted everything. So Silas is trying to stop this so he can stop from all whatever it is him and Aldrich are a part of from ever being made in the first place. You know? So I, I think it's it potentially that's where my thoughts are on that. Because she has been the most secretive person in the entire series. Like from the beginning, she's taken part in all this, but she's had her own reasons that she's let no one in on it. She's letting Scott in on it kind of near the end of the episode. But even then, it's like, oh, there's like so much more I've got to show you. Because there's a literal tower that looks like it should be from present day here in this world. And it's like, how did you build that here? Did you teleport that here with a sinkhole? Or did you actually take the materials from the future and built that here? Like in the past way 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 in the past you know so it's like uh, not unless that's supposed to be like the epicenter of all like the time travel all the sinkholes and stuff like not unless that facility might be the centerfold like kind of the command center of all of this once again just kind of throwing out my thoughts but aside from all of that um they uh sam came with a team of like mary beth as well as uh lucas uh Pada, uh, Ty and Riley all for the purposes of uh, rescuing Josh, Eve, and Levi. And luckily they successfully do uh, with the count. Well, Riley, Mary Beth, and Lucas were meant to get, um, needed to get Isaiah to the portal, whereas like Ty, Pada, and Sam helped save uh, Josh, Levi, and Eve. Uh, cooperative effort obviously Pata kind of blamed herself for a lot of this because she never saw uh, Silas for what he was and now my people are doing all this in service of him but you know Ty's like you can't control how people act like their choices are theirs they made this choice to help him so that's on them and not on you but you know she's she ends up telling Ty to go back go to 1988 because even though he because they won't have what's necessary to treat him like it, it's not a, a, they're not in that position present day not really something they could do back in 88 but they will have the medication and stuff to make it at least peaceful so she's kind of saying like go back because at the very least that is more your world than this but you can tell she didn't want him to go back but she wanted to kind of do what you know, she believed was like right by him you know because it wasn't just Isaiah that was going to go through the portal like everyone else had planned to like you know it's like right whoever plans on going through the portal go through the portal because Sam and uh, Riley were planning on staying to try and find a way actually home. And I think maybe that's potentially the irony behind it. Uh, but uh, Lucas and Mary Beth wanted to go through the portal. They had made that decision together. And um, sadly, um, on the way there, like uh, one of Silas's guys attacks. Luckily, um, the others show up and help. But Mary Beth already got stabbed. And I thought it was kind of interesting to keep noticing. Like, even in those moments, he still kept calling her Mary Beth. But she's like, no, no, I'm good. Like, let's get to that port. I'll be going slow. And even Eva was like, no. And she's like, go ahead, protect your family. And I'm like, I love that. That it's like, yeah, you guys started off as enemies. You didn't like each other. But now it is a thing of like, yeah, you became friends. You became allies. Like, especially after everything you've been through. So Eva's like, you know, because she, I think she already felt guilt about having to leave Sam behind. So considering her condition, he, she didn't want to leave him, her behind. But you know, Sam wanted her to go back, but it's like, no, like, Mary Beth wanted to keep going because she was probably hoping, like, yeah, if I get to 98, I mean, eight, I keep saying 98, 1888, not 1988, jeez, I'm sorry, they will patch her up there, but I think more so, it's like, she probably knew on some level, oh, she said it was worse than she thought it was, but it might just be, she knew it'd be an excuse to keep Lucas going, because before, if it was Lucas from before, nah, he would have left, no problem, Maybe he would have felt some guilt over it, but this Luke is who definitely cares about his mom now. You know, it's like, right, I'll go slow with her. And as they go that way, you know, 
He's like, don't give up. He's like, I don't care if I have to carry you the entire way. She's like, you can't carry up a mountain. He's like, then I will try because, you you know, I'm not going to leave you behind. And it's like, I think that's so beautiful. It's so sad that it took so long, all the issues back and forth, so long away from each other, him down the wrong path for them to be here. You know, it's like, that's the complicated thing of like, this journey was a beautiful and necessary journey because it brought a lot of these families back together. Because I mean, even Josh was like, honestly, because uh, uh, it's like, I'm worried about Izzy, but Eve is like, no, your dad's going to take care of her. And Josh is like, I, yeah, he's like, I think, and think so. Because he, he even says like, before all this, if you asked me a couple of days ago, I never would have like believed in dad. But now I do like, you know, considering everything and seeing like who Isaiah is, is like, I see a lot of my dad, the good parts of my dad. Like I let the negative sides kind of outweigh in my mind, but he's seeing his dad through a new lens. Like I think their family is better off because of this journey. Not saying it wasn't, but I think it was a necessary thing in the long run. Because I mean, but the, I mean, the same thing is applicable with, like I said, with Lucas and Mary Beth, and like she's like, I'm not going to make it. You need to go on with him. He's like, No, and she's like, I need you to promise me you'll go there and you'll live a better life, like you know, live live a good life. And he's like, No, I'm. Just, and she's like, Promise me. And she's like, I love you. And you're like, It's actually really heartbreaking. He was like, No, come on. And he was like, Mom. And he in, in those moments he was calling her mom, you know. And I don't think she paid too much attention to it, but I I think he went from stop like before she even died, he started calling her mom again, you know. And it's like, come on, mom. Like, he's like, no, no, come on. Wake up, mom. It's, it's going to be okay. You know, wake up. You know, and it's just, he's calling for Sam and he's just holding his mom like that. It's heartbreaking. It's like, they finally found their way back to each other after all this time just to, for him to lose her like that. You know, and I don't think there's any going back from it. I think she is going sadly. It's like, damn, that's, that's super rough and that's super heartbreaking, you know? Um... Then you have like the Lily and Veronica stuff where Lily says the thing that Aldrich promised her, even though Aldrich was kind of lying through her teeth, uh, is because she knew where um, Lily was going to end up and the necessary role she was going to play into everything. Once again, for them to know what they know, this can't just be like past stuff. They have to have seen the future. They have to know the future to know what they know. You know, that do it doesn't make any like... Because it's almost like deja vu for them. Like, oh, we already know how this is all going to play out. Because either they're from the future or they've kind of played through this scenario before. But Silas is trying to change things from how it was. I, I, I just don't know. Like, there's so... Time stuff is crazy because you can, there's so much you could do with it. Like, it could go in multiple directions. Like, I could be partially right in some areas and completely wrong in other areas. You know, it's it, or it could be completely right or I could be just completely wrong. It's just... It's going to be interesting to see how they handle that in the future. But... Um, uh, not trying to, like, not trying to make a pun or anything there just with that ton of me using that specific phrasing there, but back to present day, they have to warn people about the Seattle situation because the uh, sinkhole could potentially open up in the middle of Seattle, so they have to warn everyone away. But, uh, like, they can't do that on their own, so they bring it to Adam because he's the only person that has the power and position to make that happen. But it's like, can we really trust him to do it? It's like, you know, we all we have to do is, like, he's not going to believe a map, which the moment they show him, he doesn't believe them. But it's like, well, we are talking to the people who are in the center of all this Gavin's visions and everything. You are following them before now, so you should follow them now. But still... They're not willing to, he's not willing to lift him because he's like, right, if I do this, the manpower necessary, if I do this, then I'm, I'm going to lose my job. But it's like, please believe us. Like, because Sophia was like, these readings could represent there being a sinkhole. So this could be something of a massive scale where it could be saving so many people's lives. You even had quote unquote Lily coming with them because for her, um, because for her, um, she started remembering Veronica, which I should tie this back in because I thought this is where, once again, that's the problem with like when I get distracted sometimes and come back to recording, I'm like, wait, where was I at necessarily with that? So I can still tie it all together. I'm still all over the place. Once again, I apologize. I'm trying to be better about that. But tying it in, Lily and Veronica are in a position that they're in because Aldrich promised, hey, I can help you find your family. And so she has to do this. And Veronica's like, wait, you're going to leave me behind? She's like, I was hoping we could go to 88 together. And that way we could start over. She's like, I know you want to forget everything between with Aaron. What he did was terrible. But at the very least, it brought us together, you know. But she's like, I want to find my real family, which, you know, that stuck deep for Veronica. It's like, oh, I thought we were somewhat family. But Veronica gets stuck in a bear trap and she tries to break free, but she can't. But 
Veronica wants her to go. It's like after everything you've been through, you deserve to live a life. So go live a life. Find your parents. You know, do what you need to. Like, you know, but Lily's like, I promise you when I'm done, I'll come back. Because the plan wasn't for her to go to 88, only to give the map to Isaiah and then come back. And then her and uh, Veronica, you know, then they'd uh, find a way back to the present day with Aldridge. And it's like when we get away back to Aldridge, when, when we get back, like Aldridge will show us a way to somehow get home, and when we do that, like, I'll be, you'll be able to, um, find all the information you need about finding your family, so, Veronica lets her go, because it's like, despite everything, it's like, right, because I think she also feels responsible, like, yeah, this is my role, as like, especially what part I had to play in it, if I'm able to, like, give you some form of a life, then it's okay, it means letting, because, for, 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 uh, for Veronica, I stuttered on that, sorry, um, Lily's all she has like that's the only family she has left now and so because she doesn't even know like can I even really go back to my own family after all of this so it's like right like I'll be alone but at the very least you deserve you have every right to come back to your family especially because I ran away so she probably looks at herself like I kind of like I think she probably blames herself being like I ran away so she probably just assumes her family doesn't care about her because she's probably like oh they never came looking and Lily was only been going from her family like for years not like she ran away she was taken so in her mind, she probably looks at their circumstances as uh, different. When actually, they're the same. Like, run away or not. Like, he's, Aaron still did take advantage of you and put you through all that. So, I mean, once again, it doesn't, it doesn't lessen her being any more of a victim under these circumstances, you know? But that's why present day Lily wants to be a part of this. Because she can remember Veronica's like, there's someone there important to me. Um, I need to get back to, I made a promise to get back to, because the moment she, Veronica says a line of, I hope someday you can find it in yourself to forgive me. I was like, she's not going to see little Lily anymore. She's going to see adult Lily. And it's going to be a thing of like, I forgive you. It's okay. Like I live my life. I, I think that's where that's going to be. Um, cause I think in the grand scheme of things, Lily did like, she probably never, she never found her way back to her actual family. Cause she is going to end up in 88, but she lived a good life, like the family that eventually adopted her and took her in were a good family. She got to live her life and live a good, full life. So I think for her, it's like, regardless, of, and you gave me the opportunity. You sent me off with your blessings. And because of that, I, I'm coming back here. Like, I got to live my life. And we're like, despite it took a long time, uh, a very, very long time. But I, yeah, I think it's going to be beautiful when they are finally reunited. I think that's uh, potentially what we're going to see set up for the future. So that's going to be interesting. Other than that, like I said, it's a race to get um, Isaiah to the light. So they go to an underground passage, which I'm like, oh, cool. We're going to be full circle with the tar pit. Don't want to fall into that. Josh kind of taking a leap. I thought was pretty dope, um, especially after him and Riley finally like connected. She's like, I'm glad you're not dead. And so, oh, she was glad to see him at first. And now they have to get separated again. The moment Josh went up there, I, at first I was thinking like, oh, is it just going to be Josh and Isaiah? But the moment like he started going up, I'm like, right, it's this kind of started with your family. So, of course, it's going to have to kind of end with your family, too. So, luckily, and I think it's supposed to come full circle, too, because like Eve, like had uh, told Lizzie, uh, Izzy to let her go when she fell into the sinkhole. And now it's like you're above Tara tar and Josh pulls you up and it's like, right, we got a mission to accomplish. Especially considering, like I said, Josh sees um, everything with his dad in a different light now because of Isaiah. He sees it as a situation of, you know, he sees it because he even tells him like, hey, the guy you're going to grow up to be is going to be pretty good. Like, you know, he's like, the fact of the matter is you're going to become a pilot. He's like, oh, I'm going to be able to fly like a bird. And he's like, yeah, like, you know. Because he knows what Isaiah is, without telling him. And I wondered, I don't think Isaiah ever really figured it out, but he probably noticed with the way Eve and Josh looked at him. Like, he probably gave him some idea, but maybe he never fully realized. But um, despite everything, Silas still st tried to stop them. But I love that moment of, like, Isaiah standing up to him like, Grandpa, like, I have to do this. I have to help Josh. And he gets it because it's like... You're trying to protect your family. Like, I'm just trying to protect my family, but here you are. Not even knowing it, you are still trying to do the right thing. You're trying to help your family. So he kind of gives up. And so uh, Josh stays behind as Eve takes Isaiah to the top. But Ty decides not to go because there's nothing waiting for him in 88. The people he cares about, Padma included, um, are still here. So it's like, I'm not... I've got every reason to stay behind. Like I, I know I don't have much time, but I'd rather be with the people I care about. And you know, a, you know, so they send Isaiah on their own, and it's like because even um, even and because showcasing that Silas knows what's what. He's like, I'll see you again, my boy. He he knew he's gonna see uh, 
him again, but he knew he'd it'd be as an older Gavin. Um, so he goes through the portal. Luckily, Izzy and Josh start feeling way better afterwards. Um, everyone's kind of reunited again. Um, the situation is like present day though. It turns out the sinkhole isn't necessarily fully in Seattle like they thought it was. It was actually near a campsite. And when they clear it out though, they do find the sinkhole, but it's not the massive sinkhole that has been before. I wonder why this one was so small. Because the interesting thing is too, like before they got there, the map that Lily brought them start disappearing. She's like, right, I was told by Aldridge to get that to Isaiah. I might not have gotten to it in time. So now the map is starting to disappear. Um, once again, time is changing. Like it's not set in stone. It's kind of very fluid and can constantly change. Once again, that's always an interesting conversation with stuff. Like how much stuff is fixed? How much is set in stone? Can you change the future? Some things will say like some things are just fixed point. It's meant to happen. It needs to happen. It's supposed to happen. But obviously we're seeing a lot of fluidity between these situations. I mean, if Levi had gotten off with the plan, with the plane with Diana, like everyone would have died. But we noticed that the plane, as well as everybody's bodies, disappeared from that site that Aldrich was building. Oh, well, dig not building, digging up. But um, but when the time comes, it's like Gavin realizes, like, no, we've been saved. Like your mom did it, so we've got to make this count. So he wants to jump in, but you know. Izzy's like, even if you jump in by yourself, I'm going to follow after So we do this together as a family. I'm like, I was like, actually, it's pretty dope because you get to be finally united as a family. But Lily decides like, no, I'm going to do this too. So, you know, um, Gavin thanks uh, Sophia for everything that she's done. And it's like, you know, he's like, I found a way here before in 88. So it's like, I'll find a way back home too after I find my family. So he jumps in. But the sad thing is, just as he jumps in, Lily shows up to try and give the map to Gavin, but the light's already closed, but it does one more spurt and it sucks her, Josh, and Riley up and you're like, whoa, that sucks. That sucks big time. So it's just as they're arriving, Josh and Lily and Riley are taken to what assumes to be, you can only assume it's 88, but the question then becomes, so where is Josh and Riley present day? They weren't supposed to be there present day, but they are, well, not present day, but 88. But so that means they're, I guess they like with their future knowledge, maybe they spent time like they're somewhere else in all of this picture because time is changing. So they knew what was going to happen. So it makes you wonder, like, you know, it's, it becomes that thing of like, cool. Well, because going through the portal, you lose your memories, at least Lily and Gavin did. So what happens to, um, Josh and Riley, maybe because they're older, it's a little different because it's a one way thing. Like the moment they went through to 88, they lost their memory. So maybe specifically traveling back in time will lose your memories. Because that's also interesting because Doom Patrol's time machine leads to like you having like memory loss, but it doesn't matter where you're traveling to, the future or the past, you're always going to lose your memories. So I'm wondering, is it like a one way thing of like, because obviously anyone that landed here never lost their memories, but it seems like, but like I said, that could just be because Josh, I mean, that could be that Lily and, um, because like Lily didn't lose her memories coming here, but apparently leaving here she does. So because she doesn't remember until years later. It might be because they're kids at the time, so they don't remember. Because I'm curious, like, timey-wimey stuff, like, they get sucked in there, like, sometime after uh, Isaiah was already sucked, sucked through. So it makes you wonder, will it be the exact day? Like, say, like, he lands there, like, well, because the times are supposed to be, like, equivalencies to each other. So, like, if it, I guess if it's set to, for example, November 5th, it's going to be November 5th, no matter how much time has passed between someone going through the portal or not. But you would think they'd show up maybe like a day or two later just because they even just a couple minutes showing up after him would lead to it being like a day or two later by the time they show up. Because it was said that there was an older girl with him and that was Lily. But, you know, no word about Josh or Riley. So either they hid or like I said, it's a timey-wimey thing where it changed and now there is a, a version of Josh and Riley. And that's going to be a complicated thing because if they're together in 88, which maybe will bounce back and forth between their life in 88, keeping an eye on things. But also, it'd be interesting if we found out, like, that'd be weird if that ends up being what they end up doing. Like, what if Josh ends up adopting his dad or something like that? That'd be weird if that's where that, that the direction that went. 
But it could be that what if they lived their whole life and they had a whole family and if that all gets undone, this very life that they built for themselves, it's that dangerous time and why myself a like, right, you know, kind of almost like a weeping angels. I'm making a lot of Doctor Who references, but um, it could be a situation of like, yeah, like Amy and Rory got sent away by a, a weeping angel. I mean, just how they generally do. And they end up like having their own life and living a full life. And it's like that whole life will disappear if you make it so that Josh and Riley never went to 88. So... It's de definitely going to be interesting to see how they handle all of this. But at the end, we get our peek at um, Gavin, Lily, and um, Lizzie. I mean, I said I keep saying Lizzie. Izzy are um, on in the, in ten thousand BC. They see a mammoth, so it's like we're here, but they're in Seattle at the time. So it's going to take a very, very, very long trip to find their way to Los Angeles, but. Uh, time to go find mom and dad. Uh, go find mom and Josh. So, which once again, Josh isn't there. So, I'm very, very excited to see where season two goes. I, uh, I know people have been very mixed on this show. Like and that, that's totally fine. I'm really glad that it's getting a second season because I'm loving this. And I'm, I, dude, I think season two is going to where they're going to go buck wild, like with everything about what Aldridge and Silas have been a part of, getting some answers on that front, uh, fully understanding the the time travel rules and just like everything that's happening with these tinkles and stuff like that. It's definitely going to be interesting to see where season two takes us with well all of this. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.